Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for watching this interview today. We have multiple distinguished experts in the field of ophthalmology and medical education, as well as the incorporation of AI in this field. Um, so more specifically, we have Dr. Eduardo Mayorga, who's a distinguished ophthalmologist and educator with a commitment in advancing medical knowledge and improving clinical practice in ophthalmology, including the use of artificial intelligence for medical education, which we will dive into uh, today. Um, he is a senior consultant for the eye department at Austral Hospital in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and is also the founder and creator of Lucia, which is the learning utility for clinical interpretation and analysis tool. And then I'm also pleased to introduce Dr. Tony Sukar, who is an assistant professor as a part of the teaching track at USC Mann. And he has extensive experience in the field of education and has recently entered the space of incorporating AI into medical education as well as education at large. And so it's really exciting to have so many experts in the room today to talk about this important topic. Um, and so we have a few questions um, arranged and we'll go through them and also open the floor for any topics that come up during our discussion as well. So to start off with, Dr. Mayorga, could you please tell us about the project involving Lucia and introduce it to us? Uh, I developed Lucia with ChatGPT for, this is a, a custom ChatGPT, so that you can uh, give her, give the, the software specific prompts to do what you want to do. Um, it's not just the same as going into ChatGPT, because you give Lucia instructions on how uh, the, the bot has to behave. What I wanted to develop is a tool that would help residents uh, solve uh, clinical cases. And this is uh, uh, a double-sided uh, sword because it could be, it can be of great help, but also uh, it could guide residents to, to maybe to making mistakes. So uh, I've been as careful as possible to put into the prompts the recommendation that anything the residents or any ophthalmologist gets from Lucia, he has to look for the evidence that supports that. You may say, well, this is a lot of work. Well, for now, it's the only way you can be sure you will be doing the right thing. Because uh, I've tested Lucia with a lot of with a lot of uh, patients, simulated patients, real patients, and it really works well. I would have liked to have Lucia when I was a resident, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but but still, uh, AI is not perfect, and this is good. This is good, especially for residents, because, for example. My, my wife, Gabby, she's also a teacher, an ophthalmologist, and she says, but if they use Lucia, they will not learn to think. They, they, they will not be able to solve cases on their own. And I say, no, because using Lucia is when they're really learning, because they can get all the answers from Lucia that they want, but then they have to look for the, the resources and the evidence that support that. And there is when they really learn. So it's like it's like working with a with a specialist that not only teaches you or gives you hints on where to go and what to do, but also tells you, okay, now go up, go to the library and read this, this, and that. So not Sure, if enough, if this is good enough for an introduction. You may want to do some specific questions about it if you if you want. That's really wonderful. And to hear that it the output of Lucia comes from evidence-based resources is very helpful for students and trainees to know about as they use the tool. Um, you mentioned um, some of the pitfalls or potential um, red flags that students might need to keep in mind when using AI tools, one of which is making sure that they cross-check any output with additional evidence-based resources. What are other things that students should keep in mind when using Lucia? Well, that's that's the, the most important. Then uh, the other thing is uh, you, you can give to Lucia the complete case. 
with all you know about it. But what I recommend is starting step by step in the way we usually uh, see our patients. So we ask them, why are you here? Which is the main complaint? When did it start? Um, all the all the uh, um, and all the things that are related to the problem they're bringing, and then give this to Lucia because Lucia will start di giving differential diagnosis as soon as you give them some input. If you just give them a phrase, she will say, "Oh, probably this can be this, 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 and that." The thing is that sometimes, if you give them everything at once, they may skip a differential diagnosis that she would have thought at the beginning. And maybe that differential diagnosis was the real diagnosis. So it's good to go step by step, visual acuity, pressure. I mean, you can give them in chunks. It's not necessary to go step by step in all that, but, 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 but step by step. And besides, it gives you the opportunity to Lucia to suggest other studies. And so you can see if you have them, if not, which were the results. So probably that would be the second recommendation I do, I give when using Lucia. Thank you so much for sharing that. And how do you envision this most helping learners in which specific environments, such as the classroom didactic setting versus the clinical environment, like real time when patients are there? Well, uh, I, I, I think this can be used in two instances. One is when they are in the real environment seeing patients. Uh, maybe they, they have a doubt, they, they can, do not have a uh, another senior ophthalmologist around to ask. They have to make some decisions. Well, that's one moment they can do this. Um, but but I think that, that the most helpful thing is uh, doing uh, grand rounds. So here the senior ophthalmologist can present a case and the residents will try to, to find out what it is about with, with what they already know with any other kind of resources they can reach, but not still with artificial intelligence. Once they say they didn't resolve it, and before saying, okay, I give up, Dr. Lee, tell me what's the, what, what's the diagnosis. Then they go to Lucia and see if Lucia adds more. Usually it does. So that's for training, that's the, the way I like, I like uh, mostly to do it. Um, the thing is that if they're seeing a patient uh, and it's an, uh, um, they have to make decisions there and make decisions, probably they will not have all the time to, to go and see what Lucia said or not. But sometimes Lucia comes with a, uh, with a tip, sorry about this, comes with a, with a diagnosis or a tip. They say, oh, I knew this. Dr. Lee taught me this. Okay, this is this. So there are many possibilities and many decisions to make when you're using this. But the, the first, the first, the most important thing is do not harm. So in doubt, just tell the patient, I'll, I'll consult with Dr. Lee or whoever and come back to you. It's very exciting for us students to see as such technology uprising for us to be able to use in both the clinical setting and the classroom setting in this way, including in grand rounds. What would you say is the current status of this project right now? This project, uh, well, we we developed a rubric to test it, and I'm working with different groups. I'm working with, with you, with your group, and I'm working with another group that has uh, representatives from three different um, hospitals, big hospitals in Buenos Aires, mostly on uh, neuroophthalmology, because the, the neuroophthalmologist I'm working with, she teaches in these three hospitals. So with her and the residents, <coughs> we are testing this. And we want to measure the results, see, see, see how it works, and then publish this work because for now it's just 
I did this. I like how it works. Would you like to test it? But that's not the way to go. We, we I should have uh, more evidence that this really works at least 90% of the time. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear you say you're also focusing on the neuro-ophthalmology sphere as well. Um, especially here in the U.S., there is definitely a documented shortage of neuro-ophthalmologists. And so for students across different resource settings and different environments to learn about neuro-ophthalmology, Lucia would be a wonderful and accessible way to do that. After Lucia is launched, what would you say is the future of this tool? Well, making it better. I'm 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 glad to work with those who use it to try to make it better and better. Improve. Uh, there is um, for improving. You can always improve by the way you you uh, program it by by uh, by giving the prompts. And also, it depends on the evolution of artificial intelligence. Uh, and this changes, I would say, weekly. Uh, there are many um, uh, artificial intelligence bots, and they are running a race where head to head. I'm I'm with with um, with ChatGPT because probably it's the first one I got the first I got the the good results. But many times I open six or seven different bots, I put into them the same questions and I check how they're doing. For now, I'm, I'm staying with, with, uh, with, I'm sticking to Lucia. Um, but uh, this, well, this will improve a lot and faster than what we, we think. And, and I'm probably it would be, it would become in a future, a tool that you can really, you can really trust. Um, if you think of it, many times you go to another ophthalmologist and and ask him this and that. And of course, Dr. Lee is trustable. But many times you get advice from, from ophthalmologists that don't know to say, I do not know. And then, and well, so they also, humans also have bias and can give uh, not that good advice. We're definitely excited to see the future of Lucia and all of the uh, new iterations of it that we see come out as we move forward. Um, these are the foundational questions that we have, and we thank you so much for sharing about Lucia. Definitely like to open the floor for any further thoughts about this tool or about the incorporation of AI in medical education. What do you think, Tony? I absolutely love it. Um, everything you were saying, Dr. Mayer, is incredible, um, especially emphasizing um, the importance of validation, whether just for Lucia or, a or any new AI um, program that we're getting that, you know, that is really, really critical that we can show the evidence um, of its effectiveness. Um, and then in the future, um, publishing that, um, that work, I think is really fantastic. And um, it's great that we are um, on that track to potentially publishing um, these these projects and with also um, invited to submit um, for a special issue um, specifically on generative AI um, and in its application. So I think this is a really um, hot topic, really groundbreaking topic um, to be involved in and look forward um, to seeing those um, those publications out there and having that that worldwide impact um, that it has the the potential to do and to revolutionize um, education and revolutionize um, patient care um, as well. And always keeping in mind that we want to deliver the highest quality um, education and highest quality um, patient care using AI um, as a tool, as an, um, as an adjunct, but always having that human oversight in, um, in a hybrid model where, yes, the AI will um, be used for when it's um, used best for reducing um, time, reducing um, resources and really taking advantage of how fast um, it can draft um, um, certain algorithms, but then always ensuring that the complex, higher decisions are made by um, human input. So together as a team, um, we can really um, drive, drive innovation. Thanks, Tony. And thanks, Eduardo, for uh, 
your lovely comments on Lucia. We look forward to the continued effort to improve it. And thanks, of course, to Ritu, our student interviewer, for being the host and moderator for today's session. Thanks so much.